gonna show you how I sampled all these incredible vintage drum machines. We have here a Lindrum Oberheim DMX. We have a Roland TR-707 and a Yamaha RX-21. These drum sounds are iconic. You have heard them on countless records. These samples are super fat, they're super warm. Because of the limitations of the technology from the era that, that these drum machines came out of, they have just an inherent lo-fi sort of character to them, but that's part of what gives this unit its character and its signature sound. And one of the things that makes this unit really awesome is the fact that you can tune each of these drums. I wanted to kind of sweep around the pitch until it really gave me the punch and the resonance that I was looking for out of it. I have meticulously sampled every nuance of this drum machine through the Slate VRS-8, and I'm going to show you exactly why you heard them back in the 80s and you're still hearing them on music today. So let me show you how I would go about sampling a snare drum. We're gonna go ahead and capture that one shot. We're gonna just get over to this transient and we're gonna clip it right there. And we're gonna zoom in to make sure that we're not cutting off any of the waveform. Now that we have that one shot, let's play it back. What I typically would like to do before I blend different samples, I'll kind of try to just accentuate a little bit of the character that I like from that particular sample. So for this one, for instance, and let's just go ahead and set up a loop for ourselves. And we're basically just gonna look for areas where it's giving us a pleasing character. We're gonna boost just those areas. So that'll give us a little tiny bit more crack up at the top. And then we're gonna do the same thing in the lower register by adding a little bit of accentuation to that lower resonance. Bring that down a little bit, make the cue a little thinner. And next, I'm just gonna check for a, any kind of honkiness in the mid range. And we're just gonna cut a little bit of that out just so that it's not eating up anything that we don't or any, any space, rather, in the mix. Right there is a pretty gross frequency, so we're gonna go ahead and just cut that out a little bit. And I think I heard a little bit of boxiness here in the mid-range too, so we might do another small cut there. And another small cut there. And let's go ahead and play that back. and then we'll check it out without that. You could even probably take up this little bit of the high boost a little tiny bit more. And then the last thing we're gonna do is add a low cut. And then if you want a little bit more snap, you can always add a high shelf. And then on this particular sample, I'm gonna do a little bit of a high cut. We're gonna use a 12 dB per octave slope. And I'm gonna cut anything above about 13. And we're doing that to compensate for what we've dialed in with the high shelf. I don't wanna to add too much of the upper, you know, airy frequencies to this snare just because I don't wanna take away from the lo-fi sound that this unit has inherently. In the sample packs that are gonna be included with this session, you're gonna be getting all of the raw samples as well as all of the custom tuned samples where we've manipulated a little bit of the sound here. So now that we've done a little bit of EQing on this sample to bring out a little bit more of the character that we want, let's take this a step further. We're gonna add some additional processing too. So I have an instance of virtual mix rack pulled up here. We're gonna go ahead and clear it. And what we're gonna do is enhance a little bit of the transient with compression. We're gonna be doing a pretty slow attack, pretty fast release on this. We're gonna do a three to one ratio. 
And we're gonna add a little bit of hair with one of these distortions, but we're gonna listen to which one sounds better in context here. So let's go ahead and start dialing in the compression. So that about there sounds pretty good. We're gonna bring the mix down just a little bit so that we can get a little bit of that natural attack poking through. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add some saturation. And we're gonna do this with the New York. Now, that's a little bit aggressive, so we're gonna dial the mix back a little bit and blend it with the natural sample. And let's go ahead and listen without this processing and then with. It's got a lot more thump in the low end. We're hearing a lot more punch. We could probably even dial that mix back a little bit on the saturation. And that kind of gives you a feel for what all kind of different saturation characteristics you can bring to that snare drum to really bring a little bit more life into it. So now that we have manipulated one of the drum samples, we're gonna try blending a couple different ones. So what I've done is I've, I've duplicated the track and we've bypassed all the individual processing. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to send those to a bus for common processing. Let's take a listen to those samples just by themselves. You should decide which snare drum you like the character of the most so that you can blend the other sounds in with that. So of these three, I think I like the character of the Lindrum the best. I'm gonna turn both of these down and we're just gonna gradually blend them in until we get a really nice and full sound. We've got all three of our samples getting routed to this snare bus here. We're gonna go ahead and turn on Virtual Mix Rack. I've moved over the processing we did on the Lindrum from earlier onto the bus track. And the first thing that we're gonna do is just go ahead and turn that stuff off. Now that we have all of those samples routed to the same bus, we're gonna process them all together. For this particular snare drum, I'm gonna use the FGA EQ here. I like this EQ because of the proportional Q characteristic to it. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this high shelf on, and I'm gonna go ahead and just boost that up, and we're gonna sweep around until we really hear it adding, adding a good amount of air to the top end. I like that right there because it's adding just a, a general lift to the sound as a whole, and it is also adding a little bit more snap to the snare. Next, we're gonna try and find the area where you would get a lot more of that snap, and we're just gonna gently accentuate that. Now that we have a good mid-range snap, we're gonna go ahead and accentuate the low end of the snare so that we really get a lot of body and fullness. And while we're doing that, I am gonna try it in shelf mode as well as just the general um, boost that we're gonna be doing with the bell curve. All 
That's adding a little bit of fullness there. And next we're gonna take away a little bit of mid-range. And let's A and B that. And then let's run that into our compressor and saturation circuits here. Now that we have a pretty good blend of these different drum samples, what we're going to do is we're just going to mix those down to a single stereo track. And now we're going to rename it. And we're going to call this one Hopper Snare. There we go. Now this is a pretty great snare sound, and this is one of the many samples that you're going to be getting with the session. And we are combining a number of different samples from these incredible drum machines. And we're just kind of creating some hybrid sounds that are going to give you something that's more interesting than any of these, you know, would do by themselves. And it's going to give you something that's really going to stand out in your mix. This course is available in the Slate Digital All Access Pass, which gives you thousands of dollars worth of award-winning plugins the industry's most game-changing synthesizer, Anna 2, and the very best masterclass production courses taught by the industry's biggest pros, all for $14.99 per month.